So, um, if the attacker really, really wants to throw stuff out of the cache, and the attacker knows the mapping policy, then the attacker can compete. Can, if you, I found out which set the victim is using and I compete for this set, I can evict the victim very quickly. So uh, now I want to show you a very, very cool graph uh, created by Henry Wong. He was actually doing a PhD in something completely different. And he had this website with, it says, cool, cool visualizations that I'm doing, not really relevant to something. And this website with visualizations, uh, I think it's, it has more citations than many of my papers. Uh, what he did is he kind of understood uh, how does uh, the Intel cache mapping strategy work. So um, what you see here on the x-axis is uh, the size of an array. What, what Henry Wong is doing is creating an array in memory, and he's just accessing it sequentially. And, he's, and the y-axis is the... Is it? Oh, wait. The y-axis is the, the speed it takes to access a random element in this array. So if all of the elements in the array are in the L1 cache, it's going to be very, very fast to access all of the elements in the array. And you can see this. When there is a small amount of elements in the array, access time is very fast. Now, if the array grows a little and it's large enough to fit in the L2 cache, but not large enough to fill inside the L1 cache, then you're going to get competition for the L1 cache, but still all the array is going to be in the L2 cache. So the average access time is a little slower, but it's still quite fast. Now we increase the size of the array more and more, and suddenly we have competition in the L2 cache. The L2 cache doesn't have room. And now what we're seeing here is the speed of the last level cache. So now all of the elements are satisfied to the last level cache. And we increase the array more and more and more. And now suddenly, we can't put all the elements in the last level cache. Some of them have to be served from DRAM. And you see there is a jump, a huge jump in the access latency uh, uh, to uh, go over this array. And now the fact that the green one, the Ivy Bridge, is kind has this nice curve, that's because Ivy Bridge, which is today, it's not really new, but uh, when this paper was published in 2013, it was the latest and greatest by Intel. The Ivy Bridge has a very, very clever eviction policy, which works specifically for accessing large arrays. And now and we're talking about generation 10, whatever lake with its like ice lake, spider lake, cyber lake, comet lake, some kind of whatever the guys in Haifa see out of their window in the morning, like I would say ammonia lake. Um, uh, they have a very, very clever eviction strategies so that even if you're running out of space in the cache, you can still get a nice performance. So um, now, the basic idea of a cache attack, uh, which was, again, invented by Tromel et al. in 2005, um, back when he was in Tel Aviv, I think, uh, is to find a cache set. Oh, it was in, okay. It was invented by who? It was in '92. But you find the cache set where the victim is, which the victim is using, and you're trying to find out if the victim is actually getting to this cache set, yes or no. And the idea, the basic idea, is the timing attack. I'll explain it very, very briefly. Uh, if the victim is accessing this cache set, then it's throwing away the attackers data from the same cache because there's competition. So the attacker uh, has stuff running slower because the attacker was thrown out of the cache set. This is the basic principle. And now I'm going to show you very, very briefly what is called the prime and probe attack. The prime and probe attack, a fundamental building block in microarchitectural attacks. So here is the idea of a prime and probe attack. So here is the attacker. And here is the cache. The cache is shared by all the processes in memory, including the attacker. And also the victim is sharing the same, uh, let's say the victim, uh, once in a while the victim is accessing this set in the cache. So now the attacker, using some kind of sneaky cyber reverse engineering trick, which somebody already did for us, so that's great, finds out 
which memory maps to this particular cache set. So again, this is supposed to be secret, supposedly microarchitecture, but somebody found it and then it's not secret anymore. So now the attacker knows that when he accesses pages one, three, seven, nine, and so on in memory, they all fall into the same cache set. So now the attacker does what is called a priming. The attacker accesses all of his own memory addresses, and he, now he takes control over the set. So uh, now, uh, just a review question. Uh, the memory latency now, if the attacker tries to go over this yellow array, is it fast or slow? OK, yes is fast. Yes is fast is no and slow. So all of the mem attacker's pages are in the cache right now. So is it going to be fast to access all of these uh, entries? Is it going to be fast to access this array? Okay, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. The answer is yes, because this uh, data access isn't satisfied from the VRAM. It's going to be satisfied from the cache. Great. And now this is a priming step. So now the memory is primed. I'm bringing the cache into a known state. And when I try to access it again, I'm going to see that my access is very fast. And now I am going to ask my victim to do an operation. Maybe I run some calculation. Maybe I can trigger it. Maybe I can wait. Depends on the application. The mapping isn't supposed to be publicly known well, but somebody clever reverse engineered it. And it's in silicon, so everybody knows it. Very, very brilliant work the guys who did in uh, who et al. Now everybody knows it. So, yeah, OK. Uh, so now I'm going to wait for the victim to run. And the victim, as I said, the victim is running off cache set number one. And um, the victim accessed the memory that it needed. It was either code or data or whatever. And it evicted one of my entries in from cache set one. And now the victim has something in the cache set. And one of my addresses as the attacker, it suddenly has to be satisfied from the DRAM. Can't be satisfied from the cache again. And now what the attacker does is what is called a probing step. So the probing step means that the attacker measures how long it takes to access his own memory once again. Now. Let's say the victim accessed this memory. Is the attacker's access going to be fast or slow? So yes is fast. Yes is fast and no is slow. OK. So yes is fast and no is slow. The attacker is, OK, the attacker's access is going to be slow now. Why is it going to be slow? Because one of the entries that the attacker owns is going to be served from DRAM which is hella slow. DRAM is very, very slow. So now the attacker, when the attacker does what's called the probing step, the attacker discovers that in this particular instant of time, the victim accessed this particular piece of memory. It could be a data structure. It could be an instruction that it was running. Both of them work. And of course, I can't see what, what, is, what, I can't see what the data was. But I can see the address that the victim was accessing. So uh, I'm going to 